my hair is at an awkward stage i really like my pixie cut but right now we're overgrown here but not enough it's a thing Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel when you read where I talk about books and things. If you're new to my channel, hi, welcome, and thank you for clicking on this video. Seriously, it means a lot to me. Um, I mostly talk about science fiction books and today we're going to talk about my January TBR, which is all sci-fi. So let's get started. If you saw my previous video, which if you didn't, I don't blame you because it's like an hour long of me just showing you the books on my bookshelves that I plan to read. When I say plan to read, I mean I might get to them or I might start reading them and not finish them or I might not get to them at all. It's just books that I know that are on my bookshelves and that I should be getting to and I'm not. All of these books were featured there. All of them. I do have some other books. Oh shit, where's my phone? I do have some other books. Hang on. I am back with my phone. I do have some other books that I am reading um, that are not physically here with me They're in the spiritual realm, but um, that, I'm, that I wanted to read. <laughs> so, what is this? <laughs> so, um, they're here in my script thing and um, they're books that I plan to read this month. Not gonna lie to you, I've already read at least one and a half of these books and hated them. So if you wanted a spoiler for my wrap up, I hated everything that I've read this year. So um, let's get started with the physical books. So I have Unwind by Neil Schusterman. This is a book about a society where teens are unwanted, where unwanted teens are salvaged for their body parts. I still think that that is such a crazy premise. Like, who came up with that? Uh, well, Neil Schuster, man. Uh, three runaways fight the system that would unwind them, brought together by chance and kept together by desperation. These unlikely companions make a harrowing cross-country journey, knowing their lives hang in the balance. If they can survive until their 18th birthday, they can't be harmed. But when every piece of them, from their hands to their hearts, is wanted by a, by a world gone mad, 18 seems far, far away. You know, this is 2016 YA. Is it 20? No, I think it's 20, 2016? Where are you from? 20, 2007! This is from 2007. Man, you're old. But yeah, I want to read it just because I never read it when it was hyped. And I thought that I would like it, and I want to make 2007 Monica really happy. So yeah. The next book I have. I don't even want to touch it. I'm angry at it already. But it is Only Human by Savelle Novell. Um, this is really bad. Like, I, I can't even explain to you how bad it is. I'm halfway through, and I'm just going to finish it just to finish the series, honestly. This is the third book in the series. The first book was really good. The second book was okay. The third book feels like I am slowly being torn apart like the unwind kids are. You know, like, it's, it's, it's really, really, really bad. Then we have this one that I'm loving. I'm so happy that I'm loving this book. Um, All Worlds Are Real Short Fictions by Susan Pollock. This is, let me read you the back. <laughs> let me read you the back. Beautifully crafted, unfailing, strange, and always moving, Susan Pollock's stories shift effortlessly between fantasy and science fiction. Science fictional, science fiction, magical realism, and horror. Here you will encounter aliens, ghosts, and robot and robots, along with a colorful assortment of eccentric and vulnerable humans. You will see souls trapped in ludus, lu, lucid, lucid. Witness the operations of a magical measuring tape and watch the oldest woman on a generational ship bequeath a precious Terran relic to a young friend. Collecting. Tales published in markets such as Tor.com, Asimov's, F FMSF, Lightspeed, and other old worlds are real also includes three new pieces exclusive to this volume. So far, I am loving this um, short story collection. So granted, I've only read three of the stories, but every story makes me want to read more. Like, I read one before bed and I'm like, should I read more or should I go to sleep and... I uh, hate my corporate job the next day, you know? Uh, then we have this tome, which... 
scares me because I haven't done a lot of physical reading. I haven't done any physical reading in a long time. And this is the only way I can get this book is in its physical form. So um, this is called Kid, a History of the Future. So in the year 2060, uh, there was this thing called the upload because the world was basically going to shit. It's kind of like Soma if you think about it. Soma, the video game. So yeah. So everybody went online to live in this utopia and well everything was fine except that there's people that don't believe that that's the way we should be living we should be living our real lives in our real world and not just let it get fucked up and there's this there's this i think it's a teenager in 2078 who finds an iphone from 2021 and of course, you know, he thinks, okay, this old junk, but it turns out, which is the most unrealistic part of this story, that the iPhone works. And he is able to communicate with someone from 2021 through Instagram. I don't know about you, but that sounds kind of an amazing premise. <laughs> and I really want to read it. I don't know. It's, I'm excited, but at the same time, like, I get so tired of reading physically that I don't know how we're gonna do this but we are then we have the other bane of my existence again i'm sorry i've already read some of these books i'm late to the game whatever but i read Titanic this month and i gave it 2.5 out of three stars this follows spensa and a bunch of people you don't care about in what is the equivalent of an anime beach read a beach episode if you watch anime you know that that means that oh, we're just gonna go off and it's a bunch of filler and it's boring as fuck. I don't I don't like it. There's no there's no character growth. There's nothing here except space fights. Which I mean it's fine if you like space fights, but not my not my thing. Not my thing. Then we have The Tundra Tiles by Monica Tesler. Now I decided that if I'm gonna read some books physically I should start with a short story collection and also this book which is a middle grade that reads really quickly and I will feel very accomplished to have read a book so fast. So um, the Tundra Trials, the, the Bounder series is about a bunch of kids who have the ability to bound which means to go between stars, kind of like Cytonic but better. And the interesting thing is a lot, all of these kids have some kind of um they're on the spectrum in 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 interesting and different ways and of course the story the original story follows them finding out that the academy that they go to to like hone their abilities might not be the safe heaven haven they thought it was and that maybe nefarious things are happening behind the scenes then I have this one. Okay, so excited for this book. You have no idea. I had to pick between this one and Practical Magic and stuff. So, I mean, this might change, but I'm really excited to read Leech. First of all, it's it's kind of, you know, like one of the few books that I have that is like buzzworthy right now. And it just sounds weird and creepy and fun. So, um, it's about a parasite like again alien invasion parasites have turned earth away from all of the horrors of humanity but what if that's not really true what if something else is going on and it's told from the perspective of a parasite which sounds interesting and i really want to read it and this is a sci-fi horror so it's not the only sci-fi horror that i'm reading then we have the Book of M, the Book of Monica. Actually, the author was kind enough. I got this signed by the author, and she says it's the Book of Monica. So, I don't know. You know, those stupid things excite me. Um, this is the story about a post-apocalyptic world. There was this pandemic that happened where basically people lost their shadows, and along with their shadows, they started to lose their memories. Just a sec. Diga? Sorry about that. 
I had somebody calling me on the phone. But anyway, as I was saying, so basically when they lose their shadow, okay, so I don't know where I left off, but the pandemic makes you lose your shadow first and as you lose your shadow, you lose your memories. And I think you also become quite violent. And this is following a couple named Ori and Max. And I believe Ori, um, is it Ori? Oh no, it's Max. <laughs> Max starts to get the symptoms. She loses her shadow. And to protect Ori, she runs away. But Ori decides that living a life, no matter how long, without Max isn't a life worth living. So he goes after her and tries to find her and live happily ever after. Now I have two books that I'm reading. Um, I have more than two, but the books that I'm reading um, on my on my ears. The books that I am listening to on audiobook are Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is basically about a crew of um, space travelers, I guess. Um, I don't really know what they are. But they find a missing ship. A ship that's been missing for many, many years. And what they find inside is a bun... It's like a horror house. People seem to have killed themselves. Things seem to... People seem to be seeing things. And it's basically a space horror. And so far, um, it's been quite entertaining. Then the other book that I have here that... I want to get to this month. I have a lot, but you know, um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm gonna get to them all. It's that I'm a mood reader, so yeah. I have the cabin at the end of the world by Paul Tremblay. Now I'm really scared to get to this book because Paul Tremblay wrote one of my favorite books of last year, which was A Head Full of Ghosts. Uh, highly recommend unless you are suffering from any kind of psychosis or. Um, Anything that has to do with uh, your mental health deteriorating to the point of not knowing what's real and what's not, um, I don't recommend it for that. Or if you have severe anxiety, don't read that book. But otherwise, it's a great book. Um, and then there's The Cabin at the End of the World. A lot of people are talking about it. I want to read it because the movie's coming out, even though it's Shyamalan and I don't really trust Shyamalan. But this is the story of a couple with their adopted daughter and why, why adopted sister daughter um they go to a cabin and then comes these crazy people that say the world is ending and you must kill one of you you know you must kill one of your family members in order to survive and you don't really know what if it's real or not you don't really know what's going on honestly and then I have another series of uh, short stories. I really want to get to this one, which is called Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. Schweblin. And this is a short story collection about a little toy that basically you buy. Like, remember those fucking Furbies? You remember Furby? Okay, so it's like a Furby, but it's controlled by somebody that you don't know anywhere in the world. And um, I've heard... I've actually heard mixed things, but those are usually the books that I really enjoy the most. Finally, we have a non-sci-fi. <laughs> I think this is the only non-sci-fi book that I have, and it's We Spread by Ian Reid, which is about an old woman in a uh, care facility. And knowing Ian Reid is going to be scary, and she's probably going to die and stuff like that, but... Um, it's about whether we can, like whether she's really being taken care of or if there's something else going on and about memory and about memory loss which I mean sounds great sounds like a good time am I right no um, and then I have a wild card over here I who have never known man by Jacqueline Hart Hartman I was gonna say up uh, Hartman because I know it's she's French but Hartman it's Jacqueline Hartman um, this book is about a group of women who are an underground bunker there's 40 of them and you're following the youngest one of them and they don't know why they're trapped they're basically jailed in this underground bunker and they don't know why and then one day they break out and 
it's a dystopian kind of weird book now i'm reading this on the rec recommendation of emily from emily reads and it's interesting because emily and i have almost completely opposite tastes when it comes to books like every book she hates i love and every book i love she hates but this one i think is somewhere where we can make, meet in the middle because it's weird enough for both of us but it's also short enough for both of us i don't know i just think it's it's intriguing it's it sounds like something we both will like so i am very excited to read that and i believe that's it i believe that is my tbr for the month uh let me know if you've read any of these books let me know if you like any of these books let me know which one you are most excited for me to read because that's interesting i didn't realize that i just put all sci-fi in here well horror sci-fi so uh, yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for following my channel still if you're still here. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave me an emoji, leave me something, and without further ado, I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye-bye.